All right, guys, because Turbo Tools is currently in the Blender Market sale, I'm getting quite a lot of uh, requests asking for a quick overview of how Turbo Render works. And incidentally, it's a good time for me to do this anyway, because I've recently been forced after eight years to finally upgrade my computer from a GTX 1070 with an i7700K to a 14700K with the RTX 4080 Super. So I wanted to test out the new graphics card anyway, so that I can answer a recurring question that I get asked, which is, is it worth it, Turbo Render, if you've got a really decent GPU? So let's find out. And the scene I'm using is from 3D Shaker. Link in the description below. It's a referral link, so you'll also be supporting the channel because I'll get a small cut of that as well. So over in Blender, we'll set up Turbo Tools, which is very straightforward. We're going to turn off temporal stabilization data to save disk space. This is just if you're rendering an animation and you want to be able to remove flicker from that animation. So I'll turn that off to save some space. I need to tell Turbo Tools where to store the cache files so that we can take advantage of all the different operators that come with Turbo Tools, not just Turbo Render. Okay, we'll minimize Turbo Render because I'm not going to use it initially. I'm going to render it with the default settings provided by the creator of the scene. These are the settings that they found to be the minimum to get the highest, you know, acceptable high quality result when using the open image denoiser, which they've got set up in the compositor. And for some reason, the image output, the render layers node, isn't connected to the denoise node. So make sure you connect that before you start rendering. So turbo renders off. I'll open up an image editor. I'm going to set this to render result so I can watch it happen. Okay, and the samples are 2000, so let's start rendering. Render, Turbo Tools Render, Scene Compilation, Turbo Tools and Turbo Render don't speed up scene compilation, maybe a tiny bit if you've got the Optimize HDRI option enabled, but you'll see this took about 26 seconds just to build the scene. So the speed gain comes from the actual reduction of samples, so it's only this part of rendering that Turbo Render speeds up because basically it's using, it's going to use far fewer samples because it can still get decent quality results with low samples compared to the denoising options available in the render settings. Oh, and by the way, I am rendering on the GPU, obviously, and it's set to use the optics in the system preferences. All right, so that's finished rendering in eight minutes and six seconds. So let's just save that so we can do a comparison. And by the way, if your scene failed to render, it's because this scene takes a lot of memory, so you'll need to turn on the simplify options to reduce the texture size in the render settings. Okay, so the next one, I'm going to see if I can speed this up now using Turbo Render. So let's go to the render settings, open up Turbo Render options, and I'm going to turn it on. And interior scenes, I'm going to turn this one on. We'll keep everything else as default. We have got transmission, we've got things like uh, glass light bulbs, and we've got glass on the table, probably the TV might be transmission, I'm not sure. So I'll turn that on. Emission, I don't generally bother turning that on because emission doesn't tend to get too noisy anyway, unless you've got like heavy depth of field or something like that. There's no world environment, so I can leave that off. There's not really heavy depth of field, I don't think. Not really, no. So I'll leave that turned off. No volume. Right, so... The only thing left to choose is the denoising mode and the sample presets. So I'm going to go with the high denoise mode. Although at this resolution, let's just check the resolution. It is, I believe, it's a pretty big image. So I could probably get away with using the draft. Well, it's not, it's not draft, it's just faster. So draft rapid mode with enhanced textures. It's probably going to be more than sufficient to give us a decent result at this resolution. I would generally use high if I'm using a lower resolution, uh, but draft rapid should be okay. So let's go here and I'll call this draft for the noise mode crap for the samples, which is incidentally 16 samples. So we're going to go from 2000 samples to 16. Let's see what sort of result we get. So render, turbo tools render. Right, so that's 51 seconds. So we've gone from 8 minutes with 2,000 samples to 51 seconds with 16 samples. 
which is pretty astounding when you consider that the scene compilation, I think, was about 24 seconds, so it's really fast. We can see it's not as good, obviously, but it is better in some areas. So the first thing that's not as good is the glass there. Look at the 2000 sample version. It's pristine. Um, same goes for the shadows over here. 2000, we can see these little lines in the shadow from the blinds. But here, it disappeared. So 16 samples is not enough. But before we fix that, let's just see where Turbo Tools, even at 16 samples, has outperformed the 2000 sample version. Look at these leaves, for example. Go with the 2000 version. Now we've lost that detail in the leaves, whereas even with 16 samples with Turbo Render, we've retained that detail. Same for the this border, this whatever this is here. 2000 samples. The details have been lost completely from the texture. Same on this thing here. If we look at draft, uh, the 16 sample version, we've retained all that detail. And the books as well. They've been completely eradicated, all that detail at 2000 samples. But Turbo Render, and even with 16 samples, we've retained all that really fine detail. And you can just go around the scene looking at places like that. For example, a floor, 2000 samples versus 16 samples with Turbo Tools. But definitely not enough samples because we're not getting decent quality like on this glass and also this area here. The reflections are very smoothed out. So let's have a look at how we can fix that. So what I like to do to speed up testing is just select the, you know, the worst part of the scene. So something like this where we've got really blurred reflections using Control B to border select. And then I'll turn on Crop to Render Region in the uh, Ample Properties panel. And then to make it even faster, if I want to do multiple tests, I'll turn on persistent data. So that it only has to calculate the scene once. And then I can just keep trying different samples until I find something I like. All right, so let's go to this slot here. And we're going to set up some different settings. I'm going to go with the high sample preset, not the denoiser preset, the sample preset, and see what sort of quality this generates for us. I'll also turn off the denoiser as well. I forgot that was there. That would have been slowing render down a little bit. So render, server tools render. So we've actually got that detail back straight away just using the high version. So the high sample preset. Uh, we could push it a bit higher, go with very high. And then so we'll pull this one high. Call this one very high. See if there's much of a difference. Render, table tools render. And we'll do a comparison now. So that was high. That's very high. And we are getting a little bit more detail retention in the reflection. So I'll probably go with very high. And now I've found that I'll turn off the render region and now I'll do a full render again. Oh, actually, before I do that, I don't want to cheat. We'll make sure we turn off persistent data. Otherwise, I'm going to get a faster render time because I'm not doing the scene compilation. So render, turbo tools render, And there we go, so 1 minute 28, and I think that is pretty much spot on. So 1 minute 28, a reduction from 8 minutes, and we've got better quality. So this is, with this one, let's look at some areas. That's something we've not looked at yet. Maybe this plant pot, let's look at the texture on the side of this plant pot and the soil. So this is with very high, we can see all the nice little, very fine detail on the uh, pot material and, and soil. Go to 2000 with Odin. We've lost that detail completely on the side there. But also the soil doesn't look anywhere near as good either. So you can, we can see it just, it's the difference in my opinion between an obvious 3D render and potentially a photograph. You know, it's, it's a lot more realistic when you retain all that fine detail. So there we are. I think it's a um, testament that, that even with a high-powered graphics card, Turbo Render has still got a, a lot to offer. And by the way, if we were to test this the same number of samples with Optics or Odin, we're going to get even worse results, obviously, because we used 2,000 samples and we were still getting worse results. But I'll show you very quickly. So let's do one for Optics. 
and we'll do one for Odin as well, using the same number of samples that we used here with very high. So let's go back over here, and I'm just going to test as well what number of samples it was using, because the sample preset isn't always the same value. It varies depending on what other options are chosen and what's in the scene. I'm just going to choose one of the empty slots just to start rendering and then I cancel it so that I can just see how many samples it was using. So I do render, Turbo Tools render. So I'll just save this as a preset. So I've actually already uh, got it very high. What is 0.8, 648, 160, and 0 seconds for the time limit. So I'll cancel the render so the samples go back to the previous values and then I'll choose the very high preset. And now we can start rendering with the other two denoising. So I'll do optics first because I've got this selected here. I'll turn off turbo render. And then I'm going to turn on the denoiser for the final render. We can hide the viewport. And we'll set this to optics. Put it on the best setting, so albedo and normal. And then we'll do a render. Right, so that's completed for optics. So now let's do Odin. We'll turn this one to open image denoiser, make sure it's on the best settings. And we'll turn on use GPU as well, just to give it an unfair advantage. Oh, and by the way, I've heard that the Blender developers are going to enable GPU denoising in the compositor in Blender 4.3. So I'll be able to add that to Turbo Tools as soon as they do. And that will give us the same sort of denoising time as we're getting with the uh, Standard GPU denoises, optics, and Odin from the render panel. Right, so they've finished. Now let's do a comparison check. So, very high, it's uh, 1 minute 28. So, an additional 15 seconds because of the more advanced denoiser, also because it's a very high resolution image. If it was a 1080p render, uh, then it would be four times faster for the, uh, for the denoising. And also, of course, it's not GPU accelerated yet. But I don't really care, again, because the quality is going to be so much higher than uh, the other two can achieve, even at 2,000 samples. So let's do a quick comparison then between a few of the different areas in the scene. So we'll start with optics. It's not keeping the details for the textures. So this is turbo again. A massive difference on the same areas, the books, the vars, optics. It's all gone. All the details gone. Odin. It's gone probably not quite to the extent, I think it's a little bit better than optics, but again, everywhere else, the uh, quality's gone. Optics, very high. Just general, looking at the, you know, the quality. If we look at Odin, and this shadow area, optics is very bad. Odin on its own is better than optics, and then turbo, you can see we've just got much more clarity of that detail. The leaves are as well, so optics. I mean, we're getting all sorts of things going wrong all over the place, sort of uh, artifacts there. Odin has done a better job, but we are still getting those artifacts and losing the fine detail. And then Turbo, we've maintained all that detail. So it's just the same. It's just the same thing, really. Just it's a little bit worse than the uh, 2000 version. So optics. I think it's beat Odin with the detail of the geometry on this soil. Odin looks very soft, and then turbo obviously just pristine. Let's come far away in a really difficult area. So optics, very smoothed out. Odin a little bit better than optics. So. You'll see the tech in this area, for example, optics is just gone. Odin is better. But turbo, we've got perfect uh, texture, but also if you look at this shadow, Odin, it's a little bit blurred. Optics is just not there. And turbo, it's much better. And of course, turbo render is only one feature of turbo tools. For example, in the um, compositor's publishing section, just down here, we've got the option to remove temporal flicker from a rendered animation. All we do is turn it on, and then we click Publish Animation, and it'll save the deflickered version to wherever we set in Blender's output panel. 
And this is good because usually if you render an animation, you have to use much higher samples to avoid that flicker. But with Turbo Tools, we can just keep the samples at the lower setting and then remove that flicker afterwards in post-production. I'm going to test some more scenes because obviously I've just got the graphics card, new computer, I'm quite interested to try a lot of different types of scene. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see those. And don't forget, if you want Turbo Tools, it's currently available at 25% off at the Blender Market. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.